Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Packers Stadium here on the campus of Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. Sun Devil Baseball is on the air here on the Blaze Radio Network. I am Jason Galvin. Joining me tonight is Brett Cowett on the call. And, Brett, as the Sun Devils take the field, getting ready to take on the Washington State Cougars in Game 2 of Pac-12 play. They're looking for a bit of uh, revenge after last night, a disappointing 15-4 to loss in front of the biggest crowd of the season, a little over 30. 3,400 fans here at Packard Stadium. Uh, what are you expecting from the Sun Devils tonight? I'm expecting a big bounce back. I mean, that was one of the worst games of ASU season, that 15-4 to just dredging of the Sun Devils. Even Colin Slaybaugh, the center fielder, who hits eighth for, WS for WSU, by the way, had four hits. It was ridiculous. Trevor Williams was awful. Probably it's going to be his, going to go down as his worst game of the season. I expect a huge bounce back. We've got Ryan Kellogg, who's going to make a, who I believe is going to make a great start tonight. And the Devils are going to have to play better. Otherwise, they're going to see games like that all weekend. Yeah, and for the Cougars, you know their pitcher tonight, uh, Tanner Shellebrand, he has uh, not had the best start of the season. No, in 20 innings pitch, he has a 3.25 batting average against. He's given up 18 runs, all of them earned 27 hits with an 8.10 ERA. Just not the best start you can look. That's John Lackey from last year level. <laughs> that's it's just, that's just ripe for the picking for ASU's offense right there. Ryan Kellogg's finishes warm-up pitches. Let's get you the starting lineup for the Washington State Cougars. Leading off, playing second is Trek Stemp. Hitting second and playing left field is uh, Adam Nelbowich hitting third. The third baseman is Nick Tanelu. The cleanup hitter is Yale Rossin. He will do the designated hitting today. Jason Mondes in right field and hitting fifth. Brett Jacobs at first base hits six. P.J. Jones catches and is in the seven hole in the first pitch of the game. Is sliced down the right field line and just foul, and it's 0-1. And rounding out that starting lineup, Colin Slayball, center fielder, Trey Sam Ting as the shortstop. Kellogg is the pitcher tonight, as we mentioned, and the number two for the Devils. He is one of the best number two pitchers in the country for the Sun Devil team. They entered tonight 11-3-1 on the season. They came into the series the 13th-ranked team in the country. Kellogg, 082 ERA in three starts, four appearances this year. The second pitch of the at-bat misses for a ball, 1-1. One one. Yeah, Ryan Kellogg's been one of the most dominant pitchers of ASU's pitching staff. Originally thought to be weak at the beginning of the season, but it really has come out of the gate and dominated its opponent so far. This one's fouled off, and the count is quickly one and two. Here to the first batter of the game, Trek Stemp, the second baseman for the Cougars, who uh, leads a pretty potent lineup, Brett. Yeah, he's hitting, he's hitting 390, has a four, and 410 on base percentage. Means he gets a lot of hits, doesn't really take walks or strikes out a lot. He just, all he, way he gets on base, it's hits, and that's it. And then he tries to steal bases, and there he is two for two for stolen bases, a 1.00 a stolen base percentage. Counts two and two after a ball, and the delivery is hit into right field, a fought off single to get things underway for Trek Stemp. And the Cougars pick up right where they left off last night, hitting the ball. They'll have a runner on first as uh, Nilbuch comes to the mound, or to the plate, I should say. I'm surprised David Graybill did not fly over to that ball. That was only about five feet to the left. It looked like he had bad reaction on that. Caught flat footed at first and just had to run to the base and expect a right fielder to field it in. Nelbowich on the season as the left fielder and the left handed hitter is hitting 306. He does have a couple of home runs. A 516 slugging percentage and Kellogg quickly looks over to first. But back is Stemp who comes into this game two for two on stolen base attempts. This is a Cougar lineup that likes to run. She go through the order only one hitter does not have a stolen base attempt on the year and the first pitch to Nalubowicz is a strike 0-1. Which, as you said, only two home runs, but seven doubles, 19 hits. He can still get that extra base power, but it doesn't look like he has the speed to do it. Though, as you said, those Cougars love to steal. The 0-1 from the lefty, and instead he throws over to first, keeping a close eye on Trek Stemp. David Graybill is holding him on over there. The one, eight, and nine hitters for Washington State really like to steal. I mean, combined, they have 10 attempts, and overall, they've only they're seven for ten in those attempts they're not bad they're not afraid to steal and we might just see a glimpse of that tonight Kellogg another pickoff move to first is nowhere close he comes set and delivers this one swung on and missed a nice breaking ball on the outside corner and the count 
is 0-2 to Nelbowicz. That's what you want to do with your off-speed pitches to a left to a left-handed batter. You want to keep them on the outside of the plate. Don't let them drop on the inside part. That's the wheelhouse for most left-handed hitters. Keep them on the outside, keep them guessing, and keep them swinging through those sliders and breaking balls. Kellogg over to first again, and again, there's not even a tag applied as at this point. Ryan Kellogg is just trying to keep Trek Stemp from getting too far off the bag. The 0-2 hit to second base, a diving play made, and the throw to second, or to first, I should say, is in time. It was the only play James McDonald had for the Sun Devils, but a nice one. It keeps the runner at second. It just as easily could have been runners on the corners and nobody out. Yeah, James McDonald with a diving stab there, saved a first and third situation, no outs. He could have tried for the double play, but that would have been over. That would have been trying to make something out of nothing and could have even made a worse situation than the one he just prevented. Here's the three hitter for the Cougars. This is Tanielu. Nick Tanielu hitting 426 on the season. That's the highest average on the team. It's not even close for second. First pitch to the righty is taken in the dirt for a ball, 1-0, and oh, and Stemp thought about taking third and then retreated as Max Rosser did a nice job recovering that ball. What's scary about Tanielu is that against left-handed pitchers, he is hitting 571. Kellogg comes set, takes a look at second. McDonald's creeping. Here's the delivery, and this one's chopped to third. Benjamin has no play. This goes foul, and the count's one and one. Kellogg's got to be Kellogg's got to be careful here. I mean, Tan Lou, as we just said, is monstrous against left-handed pitching. He's got to be very. He's got to be have the command to locate that pitch in the corners on the side. Just paint the sides. Make sure Tan Lou doesn't get anything good to pitch. Get him off balance. Change planes. Whatever you can do. Kellogg, the delivery, and this one's chopped to McDonald at second. The throw on to first is in time. There's two away. Stemp advances to third on the out. And Ryan Kellogg is an out away from getting away with allowing the leadoff hitter to reach. Yo Rossin will step to the plate. Kellogg's doing the right thing. He's the ball on the ground and the infield do the work for him. He doesn't want to let that ball reach the outfield or that's a run instantly. Kellogg has strikeout stuff. He's got 18 in 22 innings. He also doesn't walk many, just two on the season. And the first pitch on the way, and this one's ripped into right field. A base hit for Yale Rossin, and the Cougars lead it one to nothing. Looks like Kellogg left an off-speed pitch up in the zone there. Just easy pickings for Yale, Ro for Yale Rosen, knocking it into right field. Rosen reaches. He's on first. Trek Stemp scores, and Jason Monda, the right fielder, comes to the plate. Second on the team in RBIs. He's also hitting 309, and the first pitch to him is fouled back behind the plate. Roster has no play as it takes a high bounce up in the stands. The count's 0 1. Jason Monda has 12 RBIs so far on the season with two outs, and also hits 400 with two outs. A very deadly hitter here. Also with two outs here on the top of the first. Another lefty on lefty matchup here. This one misses outside for a ball. The count's a one and one. A lot of left-handed hitters in this Cougars lineup. Four of them. No switch hitters though, which is interesting. It seems like they focus mainly on, mainly on the pole hitters as we just seen. Both the right-handed hitters in Rosen and uh, Adam Nebelwich pulled the ball to their side of the infield when they were hitting. So not much, switch, so not much switch hitting here going on, but when they do get a ball and they can pull it, a lot of damage can be made. Sun Devils are in a shift in the outfield. Kaufman's moved over, and this one swung on and missed. Strike two. The Devils around the infield from right from the right side to the left side, I should say, first to third. It's Graybill at first, McDonald at second. Stankiewicz is playing third, and Benjamin, or pardon me, Stankiewicz the shortstop. Benjamin's at third. Outfield remains untouched as well. PB House, Kaufman, and Allen, and strike three ends the inning for Ryan Kellogg as Max Rossiter receives the first strikeout of the game, and we'll go to the bottom of the first. One run on two hits, no errors, and the Sun Devils are due up here on the Blaze. Visit 
Welcome back to Packard here on The Blaze, 1330 AM, The Blaze Radio Network. I'm Jason Galvin. He is Brett Cowett. And the Sun Devils do up here in the bottom of the first inning, trailing one to nothing. And here is what Tim Esme's starting lineup looks like here this beautiful Saturday evening in Tempe. Casey Kaufman hitting leadoff the center fielder with a 352 clip on the season. And the hero from Wednesday night in the last non-conference game before Pac-12 play started with a walk-off hit. Michael Benjamin on the heels of a 14-game hitting streak is hitting second tonight at third baseman. That's a bit of a lineup change from what we've seen most of the year as Benjamin and Stankiewicz have switched spots in the order. James McDonald, the second baseman and switch hitter, will hit third for the Sun Devils. The cleanup hitter is the catcher, Max Rossiter. The big power sophomore, Trevor Allen, in right field will hit fifth. Jake Peavy House, the left fielder and the left-handed hitter, will hit six. David Grayville, the freshman, gets the start at first base tonight. He'll play first. Stankiewicz, the switch hitter at shortstop, hits eight. And Johnny Seawald is getting the start at DH tonight. The righty hits ninth. Tanner Kleber had the pitcher for Washington State in his first delivery of the game is outside for a ball to Kaufman with 1-0. What do we know about Kleber at? Well, Kleberad, not the best pitcher we've ever seen. 8.10 ERA. He's given up. He has a batting. He has a batting average against of 3.25, and in 20 innings, he's given up 18 earned runs, and all, and all the runs he's given up are earned. All 18 exactly. 11 strikeouts and six walks. Not the gr- not the greatest ratio there. And it looks like he pitches to contact, and that's not too good for him because even when even when he strikes out, guys, he's going to get a lot of hits off of him. Kleberad's a sophomore out of South Dakota. His first. The 1-0 delivery, I should say, was fouled off, and here's the 1-1, and that's a big looping breaking ball, but it's just off the corner for a ball that counts 2-1. and one. Now, that curveball also is hanging a bit. That might be a show of things to come. I mean, if you hang curveballs to these Sun Devil hitters, they will crush it out of the stadium onto the street. Here's the 2-1 delivery to Kaufman, and he takes that one low, and it rolls to the backstop, and the count is three and one to Casey Kaufman. Here are the umpires for this evening's contest. Ramon Armendariz is behind home plate. Heath Jones is over at first, and Jake Owenhop is the third base umpire. The three one from Kleberad. Kaufman takes that high and away. Ball four, and the Sun Devils are in business. In the bottom of the first, the first batter is aboard. Just what you want to see from the Sun Devils, some plate patience with five pitches taken, and just wait for Kleberad to just break down. I mean, the guy has an 8.10 ERA, as we've said. You just got to wait and make your turn until he starts making just really sweet, nice pitches for those for those batters just to crush everywhere across the field. I mean, as we've seen, he's not the greatest. He's not the greatest pitcher, 3.25 batting average against. Here's and you're just waiting for these Sun Devils to explode. Here is Michael Benjamin, a Sun Devil who's been exploding of late. As I mentioned, 14-game hitting streak coming into the night out of Basha High School in Queen Creek, and he'll take the first pitch down for a ball, and the count is 1-0 and with Kaufman on first, and Kaufman leads the Sun Devils in steals and attempts. He's 4 for 6 on the season. Kleberad is allowing an opponent's batting average with runners on of 457. You do the math, that means that the Devils pretty good chance of getting some hits here as a pickoff move to first was close, but not in time. For some reason, he's actually surprisingly decent against right-handed hitters, a 265 clip against. But as you said, that 457 batting average against with runners on base, he just breaks down and everybody's on any of the base paths. Not a power pitcher, just 11 Ks in 20 innings is... The 1-0 delivery catches a piece of the outside corner, and it's 1-1. One and one. I mean, that's, a, that's around a half a strikeout inning. That's not what you want to see. And if this is – that's not what you want to see from any pitcher. And if this is your number two, Washington State must have some problems in the starting rotation to have this guy start. Kaufman has a generous lead over at first, being held on by Brett Jacobs. Takes a step. This one's lifted in the air by Benjamin back and left and drifting under it just shy of the warning track but making the catch for the first out is Nelbowicz and there's one away. Take you around the defense now for the Washington State Cougars. As we mentioned, Kleberad the pitcher doing the catching tonight is P.J. Jones around the infield from first over to third is Brett Jacobs. Trek Stemp, the shortstop is... uh, Tam Singh and the third baseman is Tanilu. The outfield from left to right is Nelbowicz. 
Slaybaugh and Monda. As James McDonald steps in, and the first pitch is drilled into right field. A base hit. Kaufman will round and go to third. He'll be held there as James McDonald, free swinging on the first pitch, has a single, and the Devils have runners on the corners for Max Rossiter. We already said Kleberad with a 457 average on, with a 457 average against with runners on base is already bad. But how about two runners on base, first and third? A dangerous situation for Washington State. All Rosser has to do is get it out of the infield. Don't have a ground ball in the infield. That's already asking for a double play. Rossiter hitting 288 on the season. He's still in search of his first home run, though. P.J. Jones, the catcher, will step out in front of the plate, deliver some signs to the infield, and now he will get the pitch call. Kleberad settles in. There's the first pitch to Rossiter, and that's a looping breaking ball that catches a piece of the outside corner 0-1. Rossiter is hitting 417 at the runners in scoring position and going up against Kleberad's bad, just record with runners on base. This looks to be a huge advantage for the Sun Devils in this at bat. McDonald over at first has a nice lead. He has not attempted to steal this year, though. The 0 1 taken low for a ball, 1 and 1. Looks like Kleberad's trying to stay away from Rossiter. Rossiter has a great, since he's fearing Rossiter's power, you get it out over in the middle out of the plate, and Rossiter can just hammer it to any field he wants. It's an interesting approach because with Rossiter, you stay away. It works. Trevor Allen's on deck, and if you stay away, he hits it over the right field wall. See so if Kleberad can make those adjustments. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Rossiter back up the middle. It's backhanded at second but fumbled and then not able to get the toss at second base. Kaufman will score and tie it. Both runners are safe, and the Devils have it even at one with the five hitter coming up. That was really odd. Stem got that, but fumbled it around. And while Tam Singh was on base, he flipped up to Tam. He flipped up to Tam Singh, and Tam Singh tried to get a bare hand and flipped it in the air. That was just really odd, like a circus, car like a carnival going on around second base. I don't know what either player was thinking. McDonald had a good hard slide in the second too. That might have at least distracted Tam Singh as he tried to make that. Either way, Devils have first and second. Still just one out. Games tied at one. And here is the sophomore, Trevor Allen, with four home runs on the season, stepping in. And the first pitch to Allen is taken on the outside corner for a strike, 0 one Trevor Allen slugging three, slugging 554 on the season. Just a great slugging percentage if you, you want to see from your number five guy. And as we said earlier in the roster, roster at bat, he can go the opposite way with authority. Allen, surprisingly, is hitting just 261 with runners in scoring position, and he checks his swing. It's taken for a ball, one and one. Allen, not the greatest with plate discipline. Ten strikeouts to to just a few to just a few walks. That's about that's about a point five wa uh, walk to strikeout ratio there. Not the greatest in plate discipline, but the power more than makes up for it. Just the one and one delivery, and Allen takes a look and instead pulls back, and it's called a strike. And I think Allen disagreed with that, as do most of the Sun Devil faithful here. It was a breaking ball that might have caught the inside corner. It might have caught Allen's elbow, too. That was how close it was to Allen. In fairness, Allen's up on the plate. He doesn't give it much room. Here comes the one two pitch from Kleberad. Allen takes this in the dirt, and it's two and two. Jones keeps it in front of him, so the runners stay on first and second. One away, bottom of the first. Devils and Cougars are tied at one here on the Blaze Radio Network. There are runners on second. It's James McDonald, and first is Max Rossiter. And Trevor Allen's at the plate trying to give the Devils their first lead of the series. The 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed, strike three. Allen trying to chase that high fastball. And that was obvious that was gonna be a ball, but still trying to get that power hit to get it out of here into the outfield toward the walls. But with but you don't need to do that with a clever ride. You just wait for one of those big looping curveballs to have to be <laughs> to have a mistake thrown out with one, just look just hanging over the middle of the plate. And that's when what Allen should be waiting for, not for one of those high fastballs that was closer to its helmet than it was the plate. Jake Peavy House steps in, a lefty. This is his 13th start of the season, and his average has climbed to 316. Settling in on the mound is Kleberad. 
Now he steps and delivers, and PB House drills one right field and foul. That's a shame. That was solid contact by PV House, and with that going down the line, with runners going on two outs, that very well could have been two runs, but ASU already up. Just three one in the first inning. Continuing on PV House, at 409 on base percentage, great numbers with play discipline and getting on base. Something Billy Bean would admire. Kleberat takes a look at second. There's nobody holding. It doesn't really matter. Now he delivers. PV House takes this one low, and it's one and one. PV House surprisingly inept with two outs in the inning. He's hitting 167, and with runners in scoring position, he's hitting 250. Only one for four on, only one for four average with runners in scoring position like it is now, where there's a man on second. Kleberad steps off the mound now. PB House will reset. So will the pitcher for the Cougars. Now we're ready. Kleberad comes set. And delivers. PB House takes a whiff at a hanging curveball, and it's one and two. That hanging curveball looked a bit outside, too far outside for PB House to be swinging out. But the, but those hanging curveballs have been looking pretty juicy for hitters. It's about time a hitter took a sw took a uh, swing at one. Two aboard, can PV House capitalize? Here's the one, two. And PV House out in front of an off-speed pitch, strike three swinging. And the Cougars get themselves out of a bit of a mini jam here as well. One run on one hit and an error as we head to the top of the second. This one's even at one. Back here on the Blaze, 13.30 a.m., Blaze Radio Networks. I'm Jason Galvin. He is Brett Cowett. And the Sun Devils and Washington State Cougars are tied at one as we go to the top of the second inning. And Brett Jacobs will lead things off for the Cougars against Ryan Kellogg. And the first pitch is hit down the left field line, but foul 0-1. Ryan Kelly trying to bounce back from that uncharacteristic first inning where he was letting runners on base out of bend, and those hitters were getting to him early and often. Looks like he'll try to bounce back in the second inning and get some, sta get some stabilization to his game. Jacobs on the season for the Cougars is hitting 395. And the 0-1 is chopped to third. Benjamin will charge in and throw on to first, one away. Great play by Benjamin Dare. He's one of the more defensive-minded Sun Devils on the on the field right now. Sun Devils lost a lot of defense from last year, with losing Devin Marrero, Abe Ruiz, and a bunch of other guys who went to the draft. Devin Marrero most notably drafted by the Red Sox in the first round. But what they've got to depend on is the offense of this team more than the defense now, as more of the well-rounded players left after last season. Yeah, losing... Players like Joey DeMaico and Andrew Applin didn't help either. This one's chopped to second. McDonald recovers and just barely gets P.J. Jones at first to a swing on the first pitch. And there's quickly two away. So we're talking about earlier the defense of the team. McDonald had a bit of a mistake there. He had it in his chest. All he had to do was let it drop in his glove. But instead it got on the ground. He had to pick up. He had to reset and throw it back to first and barely got him out by a half step. Kellogg efficiently working here. There's two away, and Colin Slaybaugh steps in and takes a breaking ball up in the zone, 1-0. and Slaybaugh gets on base at a 465 clip, very notable for a number eight hitter, but he also hits 378. But he's hitting right after the 156 hitting P.J. Jones, the catcher. Slaybaugh lifts this one down the left field line. Benjamin's back, so is Stankiewicz, who makes a nice catch in foul territory. And Ryan Kellogg throws five pitches in the second inning. And just like that, one, two, three, no runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the second. Sun Devils and Cougars tied at one here on the Blaze. Back on the Blaze, 13.30 a.m. Jason Galvin, Brett Cowett here on the call as the Sun Devils and Washington State Cougars are even at one in game two of a three-game series. The Cougars won at 15 to four here at Packard Stadium last night. And David Graybill, the big freshman first baseman from Tempe, the hometown boy, steps to the plate, and the first pitch he sees is taken off the outside corner, ball one. 
David Grabo only with 25 at-bats. He only have started eight games so far in the young season. Has a 484 on-base percentage, 400 batting average. Not too shabby from the freshman from Tempe. This is the 1-0, and Graybill takes a big swing and miss. Another off-speed pitch on the inside part of the plate, and it's 1-1. One one. Graybill has pretty decent plate discipline, seven strikeouts to five walks, no, hit, no hits by a pitch. Not too bad from first base, and as we said earlier, we could see a lot. We could see this guy grow in the next coming years. He'll take the one and one on the outside corner, but it is a strike, and it's one and two. Interesting call for a strike there. A lot of outside pitches are being called for a strike. Maybe the ums being a bit lenient with Kleberad right here. Kleberad delivers, and Graybill takes that one in the dirt, and the count goes to two and two. B.J. Jones having problems corralling pitches behind the plate. Looks like two or three have already gotten past him today, luckily with nobody on base for him. But sooner or later, Push is going to push. <laughs> Bad analogy there, but still, either way, it's going to be a problem later in the game if this keeps happening. Graybill takes strike three looking and seemed to disagree with it as he's still got some words for home plate umpire Ramon Armendariz. He walks away, but there's one away, and Drew Stankiewicz, the shortstop, been demoted from the two to the eight spot and the lineup will come up. Stankiewicz not the greatest defender but he more than makes up for in hitting with a 316 OB OBP 291 batting average. He's got a home run and 10 RBI so far on the season. The first pitch from Cleverad's taken up and away for a ball 1-0. Stankiewicz had a bit of an adventurous evening on uh, Wednesday night against New Mexico to say the least. It's the 1-0 is hit right back where it came from for a base hit into center field. Nothing about that pitch fooled Drew Stankiewicz. No, he was on top of it the whole way. It was a straight line up past second base. Right, solid barrel action there for the hit. So here's Johnny Seawald. Just his third start of the season for the Sun Devils. The designated hitter and hitting ninth. He's a freshman out of Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. Bishop Gorman, of course, famous for another freshman, Shabazz Muhammad, the UCLA basketball player who's just named Co-Pac-12 Freshman of the Year along with ASU's Jahi Carson. And the first pitch to Seawald is a ball, 1-0. Seawall limited action and 14 at bats has three hits. It's it's 214 has three strikeouts and also gets on base at a 214 clip. Stankiewicz will go as Seawald on a hit and run loops it into center a base hit. Stankiewicz is going to go to third and it's mishandled still by the center fielder. And the Devils will have runners on the corners as I'm telling you. The center fielder for the Cougars, Slaybaugh, dropped that ball three times while trying to pick it up and throw it in. It didn't help that Tim Seawitz out of position the moment the ball was hit. He was leaking over towards second base, but once the hit curved over him by Seawald, had to run all the way back out to the outfield to be the cutoff guy. And even then, luckily for him, Slaybaugh was just dropping the ball all over the place in center field. So it was just really broken play everywhere there by the Cougars. Runners on the corners, one away. We're back to the top of the order, and here is Casey Kaufman, who led the game off with a walk and later scored. Kaufman hits a godly 5-33 with runners in scoring position. Right now we've got, we got, now we've got runners on the corners. Seawald over at first has attempted one steal this year and it was successful in the first pitch to Kaufman's in on his knees, 1-0. Oh. Clever at against left-handed hitters, 4-12 and against run <laughs> opponent average with runners on bases, 457. Not looking good for Clever at right now. Kaufman waits. To fake the throw over to third, although nobody was covering, so it didn't exactly fool anybody. <laughs> the fake to throw, throw to first, or fake to third, throw to first strategy, which hasn't actually picked somebody off on a level outside of Little League since about 1942. And thus the MLB is getting rid of it. Here's the 1 0, and Kaufman turns on it, but foul, 1 and 1. It's the most antiquated move in all of baseball. Athletes are A, too quick, B, too smart, and C, just 
I mean, if you're a Division One baseball player or a professional and you get picked off at first on the fake to third, unless you were just going on first motion, that's, that's on you. All on you, and coaches will chew you out for the next week for that. They will not like. They will not even put. Even if you get on base, they will not even give you the green light if you're up by ten runs. That's how bad it will be. Here's the one and one to Kaufman. Long wait for Kleberad, and now he steps off. You can see Kleberad's getting some nerves. He's at the antiquated for uh, third to first throw move there, and then he's waiting so long on the mound, and even Kaufman's just getting a bit frustrated here. Stankiewicz is on third, Seawald's on first. And this one's hit down the right field line, but also foul. Coughing a bit mad there, he's out in front of it. He knows if he just waited a few, just a few milliseconds later, he would have had a nice hit down the right field line into the corner, and a couple runs could have scored. Hoffman now taking his time, stepping back in. Now he appears to be ready. Clever adds pitch is hit to second base. Taylor made four to six to three. The double play ends the inning. Is he really not jumping on Clever on these opportunities given to him by Clever? He's not a great pitcher, but they're free swinging at anything he throws that's re relatively close to the strike zone. Think they can slam it, and right now that's not working out. They need to build a lead right now. Kaufman grounds into the double play. The Devils get two hits. They can't capitalize. No runs on those hits. No errors, and we go to the top of the third inning here at Packer, tied at one. Top of the third inning we go here at Packard. Trace Tam Singh will lead things off for the Cougars. All tied at one. I'm Jason Galvin. He's Brett Cowett. Sun Devils have threatened several times, but have been unable to break this one open as Singh fakes, or at least attempted to bunt, I should say, and missed up the first baseline. This pulled, battle. It, pulled it back, so they call it 1-0. This at bat, a battle of Trace Tam Singh's 429 average when leading off and Ryan Kellogg's .091 average against leadoff hitters. Second pitch misses. The count's 2-0 and oh, and Ryan Kellogg. This is as far behind in the count as he's been with anybody tonight. The 2-0 is up and away, and all of a sudden Kellogg struggling to find the strike zone against the nine hitter for the Cougars. It's 3-0. And, oh. and it's not really scary to face Trace Tam Singh as a left-handed pitcher. He only hits 231 against him. Not too great. Looks like a reverse platoon split for this guy. 3-0 is in there for a strike. Trace Tam Singh. Is about to face the fifth pitch of this at bat, which equals how many Ryan Kellogg threw in the last inning. And that one misses outside for a ball, and Trace Tam Singh has walked on five pitches, and we're back to the top of the order in Trek Stem. Ryan Kellogg's third walk of the season. He only had two up to this point in 19 strikeouts. A power pitcher in every in everybody's baseball definition. Stemp settles into the box. He led the game off with a single. Later scored. As a matter of fact, both teams, leadoff hitters, singled and later scored. Trek Stemp is fantastic against left-handed pitching with a 632 clip against him. Takes a big whiff. It counts 0-1. And the throw down to first nearly got Tam Singh. As I'm telling you, Rossiter threw a bullet, and Graybill got a nice tag down, but it's just back in time. Rossiter with the Yadier Molina favorite throwing down, throwing a bullet down the first baseline to that, certain, to that base, nearly getting Tam Singh. And, boy, it was close, probably by fingers. Pickoff move over to first is... More so just to hold the runner. Kellogg again will throw to first, and again, Tam Singh is back. 
they're worried about Tam Singh stealing a base, but he's only had four attempts, and even then he's only fit, he's only succeeded 50% of the time. I mean, they should be worried, of course, but there isn't there isn't much to be worried about outside if he actually does steal, because you can still gun him down. Another throw over to first, and again, nothing happening. And again, the throw over to first. Four straight throws over to first. Kellogg's must see something in Tam seeing there that we all must not be seeing. He, either he's got the nerves or he's really, really concerned for Tam Singh. This one misses as we finally get a delivery, and it's a one and one. you got to wonder if all of the throws over to first for Kellogg might have now taken him out of his pitching rhythm a little bit. Yeah, because that was just over that was just overkill throwing it over to first that many times. I mean, once or twice, sure, but come on, just throw the ball and here's another one. Just ridiculous. So Ryan Kellogg has now thrown as many times to first in this at bat as he has to home plate, and finally a delivery is lifted shallowly into left field and on the run a dive. And not being able to get there is PB House. Stankowitz out and picks the ball up, brings it in, and we'll have runners on first and second on what will be scored as a single. The second of the night for Trek Stemp. Looks like PB House is a half step behind that at bat. Once he got off the bat, it looks like he got a late, you know, like late jump and he couldn't get over there in time, just a couple feet away from it. At least he knocked it down with his glove and saved it from being a double on an error because because Tam Singh can actually run. He has the speed to, but he can still. But he kept it too. Tam Singh only going to second, just so it looks like a single. Brett, to be honest with you, I did not think that that ball was hit anywhere close to as deep as it was off the bat. I mean, that might have been part of it for PV House. I thought that was going to be a lazy fly ball on the infield dirt. And instead, it ended up about 275 feet from home plate. So here's the delivery to Nelbowit, and he's going to bunt. Kellogg picks it up, and his only throw is over to first. And he gets Nelbowit for the first out, but the runners advance. Now there's two in scoring position and still just one away. Kellogg with the textbook pitcher throw to first didn't try to overdo anything as we've seen with major league pitchers who try to overthrow everything try to make try to make the big play but Kellogg calmly picked up the ball throws it to first how you should do it and I must admit right here one of my pet peeves is pitchers not being able to pick up bunts and throw them to first at least Kellogg did it right or else you might have heard some angry <laughs> angry some angry vehemence over here from my direction Ken Knudsen on his way out to the mound for the Devils, he wants to talk to his pitcher, Ryan Kellogg. Yeah, Ryan Kellogg's looked a bit shaky in just two innings in 10 batters' face. He's only struck out one. He's walked one. He has an earned run in three hits. Not the start you want to see from Kellogg, who just over the season so far has 19, has 19 strikeouts to just three walks. And has more strikeouts than hits given up. He isn't looking his dominant self tonight, so he wants to find out what's wrong. Kellogg is just a freshman out of Whitby, Ontario, Canada. Henry Street High School up there. He was a 12th round selection for the Toronto Blue Jays and did not sign in the draft. And his first delivery to Tenailu is taken for a strike 0 1. The Sun Devils got quite a few players that were drafted and decided to come to ASU instead of being drafted straight out of high school. Good steal. I mean, if you have six players who were drafted, then you've got real quality players that you've brought in to the Sun Devils. Delivery to Tanahilu misses outside. The counts one and one to the righty. Roster setting up basically in the opposite side batting box from Tanalu, it's really strange. I mean, I don't know if he's trying to get him to throw a curveball, change up on the outside corner, but he, in the end, Kellogg's just throwing way outside. Kellogg again misses outside in the counts. Two and one to Nick Tanalu. Tanalu is a redshirt freshman. And he takes low and away and the count is now three and one and Ryan Kellogg is in a bit of a jam here 
Yeah, second and third with one out. He needs a strikeout or a pop, or a pop up in the infield or foul territory because right now he needs to get Tanlu out at the plate, and that's going to be hard to do as Tanlu is the best hitter on this Washington State team. He'll take that one outside, ball four. Maybe that was the plan. Stay away if you get some strikes, you do, but we'll take our chances here with the cleanup hitter, Gail Robson, who happens to be a lefty. Yeah, that might just be the plan, just pitching around Tanlu, making it look like they're actually pitching him, just throw on the outside corner, you miss, you miss, whatever. And now just lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, see if Esme's and see if Esme's lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, as we just said, will actually work out here. They need a double play ball really soon. Rosen does lead the team, five home runs on the year. He's a sophomore, and he'll take the first pitch low for a ball, 1-0, and oh, and Ryan Kellogg who walked just two in 22 innings coming into tonight has now walked to this inning and he's already behind to Rosen 1-0 Rosen steps out of the box Rosen against left-handed pitchers is hitting 333 and with runners in scoring position he's hitting 400 but Ryan Kellogg with posing average with runners on base is 154 Swing and a miss, and the 1-0 delivery evens the count. It's 1-1. One and one. If we haven't emphasized this enough, this is a huge at-bat for the Sentinels. You don't want to let the Cougars get up on you early once again like they did last night. Last night, they just knocked around the Sun Devils. And right now, the Sun Devils need to return the favor, starting right here with Kellogg getting a couple outs. Rosen chops one to first. It just goes foul over the head of Graybill, and the count's now 1-2. and two. Rosen a bit out in front of that. That one looked like a breaking ball there, a sinker, but went over the top of it in a huge Baltimore chop off in the foul territory. Another nice crowd here at Packard on a Saturday night game two of Pac-12 action for the Sun Devils, and they're trying to make some noise for their freshman pitcher, Ryan Kellogg, whose delivery just misses for a ball. Rosser did his best to frame that on the outside corner from Rosen, but nothing doing. Umpire Ramon Armendariz was not taking it. Two and two, bases loaded, top of the third, and an off-speed pitch misses up in the zone, and the count is full. Kellogg needs to go in for the kill right now. He can't, he can't, he needs a fastball in the zone somewhere. He can't hesitate with any of those off-speed pitches with the risk they might drop outside the zone, and he gets, a, and he walks in a run. Big pitch here from Kellogg, the three-two. Swung on and call it a strike and a play at the plate and the throw is in time. A double play and the Devils are out of the inning. Nobody realizes it. Now we've got timeout on the field. But no, they're out of the inning. A strikeout guy didn't run to first and they got the out at the plate. He didn't even need to tag him to step on the plate and that is it. The bases were loaded. There was no need for the runner from third to go. That was Tim Singh, but he did, and Rossiter turned around, tossed it to Kellogg, who got the tag. There's an argument right now from, I believe, the third base coach for the Cougars. It's going to be an unsuccessful one. He's really upset about it. I'm telling you, we had the perfect view for it, and to be honest with you, so did the umpire, Ramon Armendariz. It was the right call. He was out. Oh, yeah, he's going to argue that he didn't tag him because his hand was in a different place, but even then, Kellogg was sweeping up at the glove and still got him regardless. He's going to lose that argument just ten times out of ten. So, again, the Devils escape a jam. One run, or no runs, pardon me, on one hit. A couple of walks, no errors, and Cougars leave the bases loaded as we go to the bottom of the third here on the Blaze. Back at Packer, Jason Galvin, Brett Cowett here on the call on the Blaze 1330 AM, the Blaze Radio Networks. To the bottom of the third we go, even at one. As a matter of fact, the scoreboard looks like Binary code. on both sides. Yeah, binary code. 1-0-0 mm -hmm. and o for Washington State. 1-0 and o for the Devils as they come up in the bottom of the third with Michael Benjamin taking a strike. The count's 0-1. Both teams have one run on three hits. The Cougars have the only error of this game. Michael Benjamin not too shabby leading off, hitting 417 on the season. Benjamin is 0 for 1, but he hits this one up the middle for a base hit and extends his hitting streak to 15 games for the right-handed hitting third baseman for the Sun Devils. 
This one we want to see from a leadoff hitter, ASU. Now getting, hopefully ASU can get that offense going in this inning and not start free swinging at anything Tanner Chelborad offers to them. They just need to wait for him to make a mistake because as we've seen in his 8.10 ERA, he does that quite often. Here come the hitters that can make Cleberad pay on those mistakes. It starts with James McDonald, who has an RBI single in this one already in the first pitch is up and into him for a ball. I want to know, pardon me, Rossiter had the RBI. McDonald had a single. That actually helped set up that run. The 1-0 delivery. Set a throw over to first. Benjamin slides back safely. Michael Benjamin is not a huge threat to steal. He has one attempt. It was a successful one on the season, though. I mean, he's, he is, he's not bad as an out, as a third baseman. He's more of a defensive type of guy, but he's really stepped up his hitting this year especially because last year was woefully inept with the bat, and this year he's gotten much, Go much better. He got, he's caught in a rundown there, Brett, as uh, the throw got away, the pitch got away, and over to second. Benjamin is in there safely. The umpire, the umpire just called safe. And then it looked like he made an out call, but he might have been pointing. It looked like he called him out and didn't see the ball, ro and then saw the ball roll out and then pointed and just yelled save and didn't make the sign is what I'm guessing right now. So the count is 2-0. and oh. I don't think we're giving Benjamin a steal attempt on that one as it was kind of a pass ball and he got stuck in a rundown, but we'll have to wait for the official scoring. And they do give him a steal. So thanks for... That one, home home team scorers. This pitch is <laughs> up and in, and it's 3-0. and Michael Benjamin will take any and every steal he can get, I guess. Yeah, I mean, as we said earlier, he's not won the steal very much. Only had one attempt and was successful. I mean, another attempt and it was successful. He's got a streak going again. Got a runner at second. McDonald's got a 3-0 count, but I'm guessing the way Kleberod's pitched this year and in this game, the green light might be on, and here's the delivery, and McDonald takes it for a strike. That wasn't a pitch you're swinging at 3-0, even if you have the green light. Yeah, that was just way inside. Looks like the ump expanded the strike zone a tiny bit there for Cleberad. So we'll try this again as the count is now 3-1. and one. Benjamin on second. McDonald at the plate, and this one is taken outside for ball four. The Devils have two aboard for Max Rossiter. Just when you want to see from the Sun Devils some patience, hitting the mistakes, and now they've got the heart of their lineup coming up. Cleberad, Cleberad must be shaking in his boots. Max Rossiter is we're going to get a mound visit now for the Cougars. Max Rossiter's walk-up music is the same walk-up music as Evan Longoria's. Be a good Would, time to channel some of that. Yeah, especially I, nice, uh, huge home run to left field. And then you can just walk it down the first baseline. Max Rosser with runners in the scoring position, hitting 385 on the season. He's not too bad with play discipline either. Two strikeouts, two walks on the season. Has two stolen bases and he's a catcher, everyone. Ten RBIs and 15 hits. Seven runs scored and, 15 and 53 at-bats. Rossiter will step in now as Cleberad and the mound visit has come to an end. Is this the inning the Sun Devils get their offense going in Pac-12 play? We'll find out. It's off to a good start. Rossiter is showing bunt. And he'll take this one for a ball, 1-0. You would see if you can get if you can draw the third baseman down the down the third baseline because the fir instead the first baseman came in second baseman covered first because if the third baseman comes down that line there's nobody there for third and that means Casey Coffin has a free shot at another stolen base. <laughs> Rossiter's gonna show bun again. 
Kleberad steps off the mound. I mean, I'm not a fan of bunts, but it's a nice idea with a third baseman pulled back and he can't really move off the bag. He has to cover third for that runner from second. Kleberad delivers, and Rossiter gets a bunt, and Kleberad's going to pick it up and take it himself to tag Rossiter up the line. And there's one away as both runners move up. Not a bad sacrifice, and it looked like he was going to get on base the first, <laughs> the first base, and Red Chega was completely overran it, and Kleberad had to run over and cover for him. And Rossiter got a great bounce. It's, and it's going to be a weird analogy, but it kind of reminds me of when football kickers try to onside kick it and you want to get that high bounce. Rossiter got that, and he just missed getting it over Kleberad. Yeah, it looked like he aimed for the dirt right in front of the plate where he could get the most bounce out of the ball instead of aiming for the grass having a slow roller. So here's Trevor Allen, the big powerful righty, the sophomore. He steps to the plate, and the first pitch is taken in the dirt for a ball, 1-0. Trout putting his hand up to keep Kaufman at third base, unlike the Washington State third base coach who sent Tam Singh down the line and was out by a mile. Kaufman on third, Benjamin on second. There's one away. Pardon me, it's Benjamin on third, McDonald on second. One away. This one's lifted in the air for Allen. Going back on it in left is Novowich. Instead, it's caught by the center fielder Slaba, who comes over. Both runners advance in the Sun Devils. Take a two to one lead on a sack fly by Trevor Allen. Double sacrifice plays later. You get a run and still a runner on third. Sun Devil offense finally waking up in Pac-12 play. This is going to bring PB House back Jake to the plate. PB Jake PB House. And this one is 0 for 1. He's got a chance here with a base hit to extend the Devils' lead to 2. It's at 1 right now, 2 to 1, their first lead in Pac 12 play. And PB House is hacking away at the first pitch and puts that one out into the concourse down the third base line. It's 0 and 1. Jake Peavy House, not the greatest from learners in the scoring position, 231 with two outs, he's hitting 158. Hopefully we can see him get a hit out of this one. Peavy House has just three RBIs on the season, and this one's hit right back up the middle, a base hit. Make it four for Jake Peavy House, an RBI single, and the Devils lead it three to one. Finally, the Devils break through against Kleberad, and if the Washington State Cougars make a mistake and keep him in the game, ASU might just tee off again, might just tee, continue to tee off this guy. Speaking of guys who can tee off, here comes the big righty, David Graybill, the freshman. David Graybill, the big, big righty here, has a 560 slugging percentage in limited amount in limited playing time, but that's promising to see from this from a freshman right of his caliber right now. And going up against Kleberad, it could be a dangerous situation. First pitch is taken off the outside corner for a strike. It's 0-1. PV House over at first. One for one on steal attempts on the season. The left fielder has okay speed, not great. And the 0-1, Graybill takes in the dirt. PB House takes off, and he's going to be in there. Sun Devils running rampant on the bases in the sending. Even when they get caught in a rundown, they still make it to the next base. P.J. Jones, apparently the scouting report on him says if the ball's in the dirt, go for it. He's not going to get you. The Devils are taking advantage of that, and now Graybill has a chance to pick up an RBI and extend the Sun Devils' lead even more. Already two across in this inning. They lead it 3-1. to one. Here's the 1-1, one and, one, and Graybill chops this one in. The left to base hit. PV House will round third and score standing. Graybill is going to head for second base, and he's going to be safe as he drops it. David Graybill was out by 15 feet, and that's not an exaggeration. But Stemp dropped the ball, yet another mistake by the Cougars infielders. Graybill goes to second, and it's 4-1 to one Sun Devils. 
Washington State is one of those teams that invests all of its recruiting into what it seems like offense right now, and there's basically been no defense, no defensive cohesion at all for the Cougars, especially this inning. A lot of their mistakes have led to Sun Devil runs. Drew Stankiewicz steps in. Devils have a two-out rally. They'll see if they can keep it going. Four to one, three runners across this inning. Starting to open this one up a little bit. Time is called at home. Stankiewicz wants to step out of the box and regather himself. Stankiewicz is fantastic with runners in scoring position, hitting 533. And with two outs, he's hitting a solid 500. Stankiewicz takes the first one outside. It's a ball. It counts 1-0. Staying with a home run and 10 RBIs on the season, 17 hits and 56 at-bats for a 304 average on the season. Tanner Kleberad has given up six hits, two walks. He's struck out three. Believe it or not, still just one earned run for the starting pitcher for the Cougars. This one's whiffed at by Stankovic, and I'm telling you, he was trying to hit that one to Mesa. <laughs> Yes, he was, and also Kleberad has magically lowered his ERA from 8.10 <laughs> to 7.54. The magic of poor defense and what that'll <laughs> do for your ERA. It's not going to help his win-loss record, though, which was 2-2 two and two coming into this one as the delivery is taken by Stankovic off the plate. It counts 2-1. and one. I mean, now ASU, if they want to, can take it easy because as we've seen, Kellogg can shut down that lineup even if he does get in trouble sometimes. But ASU has now shown that it has the offense to tee off of Washington State pitching, even if it is Kleberad. Here is the 2-1, and one, and that one almost gets a piece of Stankovic, and the counts run to 3-1, and one, a big-time hitter's count here. And if Kleberad hangs one over the plate, you got to imagine with three across already, Drew Stankovic is probably looking to go big fly. Yeah, I'd look to go big fly, too. I mean, with Kleber out throwing all these mistakes out there, you just got to wait for that one pitch, a hanging breaking ball, a fastball up in the zone, and you can take it wherever you want. Kleber had settles and now delivers, and Stankovic takes it on the outside corner, and the count is full, three and two. Grabe will be off on the pitch, a full count with two outs. Graybill at second, three runs across. Stankovic at the plate. Graybill's starting to tease him a little bit. Stankovic swings and hits this one off it and into the crowd, and the count stays full at three and two. This is going to be a good matchup here. Club Rats is horrible at opposing average with runners on base and two outs, both above 340. And Stankovic's amazing average with runners on scoring position and two outs, both 500 and above. The 3-2, Stankovic chops this one on the ground over to first. It's taken by Jacobs. He flips it over to Kleberad, and that'll end the inning. But a big one it was for the Sun Devils. Three runs on three hits. They strand one, and as we go to the top of the fourth, the Sun Devils lead a Pac-12 game. I know, I know, it's just game two. Four to one. Let's go to the top of the fourth.